for uh, for you two that are here, um, why don't we why don't we begin to get into character here? I'll give a you know the, a, a, a synopsis quickly from my point of view, and we'll drop it over to you two because we ended up uh, we ended up dropping out of action pretty well just at the end of the last session. So we can do a little bit of cleanup or conversation. Casimir, you, m I mean, if anyone was to, I guess, take a uh, direct particular action, you'd be in the position to do so. Um, so I will take us over here where, well, really, I guess we could, pardon me, we could take uh, one more step over. As you had entered this, um, this kind of smoldering, uh, lava moat surrounded basin sunk into city named Oiho, um, with a lot of, like, black smoky wisps and just a lot of weird stuff. You have, uh, you know, there, there was caravans crossing these, these endless tracts, uh, to get here. There was these things that were just charred very, very big humanoids just sludging through the lava. Uh, you eventually crossed over a bridge, uh, becoming singed, passing a test, uh, which by the way that you looked or by the way that you acted, you had passed. And we made it just inside of, uh, of the city proper where promptly, uh, you all were pickpocketed. You were, uh, you know, you had a very interesting sense of just who and or what lives here. And, um, you learned, well, this is, this is maybe is a stopping point for where you need to go in order to find, uh, the, the people, uh, that you're looking, that each of you may be, uh, looking for. Uh, oh, hi, Cold Spark. Um, so, yep, uh, you are, you're just inside here. You've uh, meandered through the city. Uh, there was, uh, an incident where people were being abducted for reasons, and then we had a, a second encounter with a group, well, with a group now instead of a singular one of the pickpockets uh, that was going after Bright. Uh, and where we had left off uh, was a fight in a very narrow alleyway. Casimir had run ahead. You all were bombarding these things with spells. There was a uh, there was a gigante that was trying to like turn sideways and eat 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 down. Uh, saw what you did to the little gribblers and then uh, promptly popped back out and started running off. Uh, now, um, Mordecai, if there's anything, you know, uh, so coffee going into Mordecai, any observations, any thoughts about what is going on or what, uh, how does Mordecai feel? Especially because right now you, you're a tiefling again. You're not a vampire. I don't know how long that's going to last, and I really, really want it to, because I really don't want to be a vampire anymore. It's kind of refreshing to be able to sleep again, to be able to eat again, to be able to just enjoy the little things out of life. I don't want that to stop. I hate being a vampire. I'm, I like being alive. So, best case scenario, I walk out of this place and I'm exactly as I am now when we get back to our home plane. Worst case scenario, I'm actually dead and I don't want that to happen. So... I want to find Jaden, get us all out of here as quickly as possible. This compass thing has been directing me towards the pit, whatever that is, and I hope to find him there so we can get out of this place. It's taking too long. Casimir, do you have any uh, do you have any observations or 
uh, things that you wanted to bring up here before we get back into the action from uh, whence we left? Big creatures, Gallard. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> and Why? not untrue. Uh, <laughs> uh, very well. Um, oh. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, Bright will Bright will sort of uh, snap into things uh, here. Uh, right now, perhaps her mind is uh, is spinning with all sorts of uh, newly nefarious thoughts, or at least newly overtly nefarious thoughts. Uh, and uh, Professor Cypherius um, has been uh, studiously looking around everywhere because his his mind is acting as um, sort of a magical printing device onto this map. And while it has more detail on it than what you see, uh, generally, I mean, we're uh, on the map here. You are getting. Oh, hey, we landed. We had this foggy, uh, smoky war zone. Then we're in the Outlands. We buried our gold coin. We crossed a bridge. And now we're in this city of Oiho. Hi, Raven. Good evening to you. And the things that the things that he is uh, not just seeing, but the things that he's trying to either commit to memory or like truly observe um, are are becoming manifest on the map. And uh, stepping now a little out of character mechanically, uh, this is doing something for you all. Uh, this is providing you a way to. Uh, backtrack your steps if you need to in particular uh, in regard to something or if you said oh I wonder if there's a something around you may be able to find it uh, otherwise it could get lost in a jumble or something along those lines including uh, geez what did we calculate that gold coin to weigh because it was like four feet in diameter and eight inches thick a few, like a thousand pounds yeah oh no no it was like a thousand well, a tons thousand. or something a couple, a couple of tons. tons yeah oh yeah was it like yeah. ten pounds it was it was gross, yeah. Uh, but that's buried somewhere out there, and you know where it is. And it does seem that now... Uh, now that you are paying attention, we have both motion and direction. Uh, you have wandered through these outlands. You have, you have started to... Uh, get the gist for the things that are like uh, how this place is operating since it uh, since this is operating differently than the fey cave the fey cave operates differently than real world um and you're starting to get the i, I guess the the background m mechanics both in and out of character mechanics uh and this place like others exists for a reason uh, it was created uh, for a purpose, uh, or and or from a source that uh, that led it to be to, to manifest in a particular way here. And now that you've had experience, especially kind of twice in a Fey cave, um, there's a lot that you can end up picking up. Um, though, as a player, you know, from DM to player, uh, you can explore this, play around with it, and. If there's a particular uh, question or a theory or something, let me know. And if it if it is reasonable that you would be able to come up with it, I can either just confirm it, deny it, or give you a, a hint. Uh, or you can have some fun experimenting in character. Uh, Dark Wolf. When do we go to, uh, uh, Ad Adirolf? That actually sounds like a fantasy place. Adirolf. Um. Okay. No problem, Fluffy. Um. But here we are. We are in the Basin City of, of Oiho. Bloop, bloop, bloop. We come, we come through here. We are in the alleyway. Uh, Casimir, I think there was, because you moved up a little bit, uh, it was something around 30 feet until the end of the, the alleyway, uh, for you. Uh, though the giant had, had backed out and got some kind of a start. If you wanted to pursue, you know, presumably you could. 
Um, we're not exactly in... I, I'm not measuring initiative anymore because the main threat of these uh, little guys that wanted to uh, to get you uh, have been taken care of. And by that, I mean they've been splattered all over the, the neighboring buildings. Um, and Including you, Casimir, because actually uh, you walked out of there with a... Uh, with an additional mutation. Uh, and that one gave you big squiggly arms, didn't it? No, they're stretching in that. Yeah, 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 all right. Uh, yeah, so you have, you have some interesting reach now. Um, okay, so yep, the, the fiendish ichor drips from the, the stonework in the alleyway. The big guy you hear clump clump in these rattling of chains as well. Uh, as as he's running, um, as as individuals, what would you all like to do? Well, if it's running, it doesn't seem like it's much of a threat anymore. So I don't necessarily think that we should pursue it. We have other things to attend to. They continue out the valleyway. Okay. Yeah. Um. Did we have a chance to see if it, like, looked guilty or, like, anything about it while it was running away? Or did it just go away? Uh, it, 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 it ran away. It, it, it was, like, kind of, it gave some grumbling roars. Uh, however, it turned around and fled right after you all just splatted uh, six of these uh, little red laughing creatures. Um, but there's there's nothing really that was uh, a sense of guilt, innocence, remorse, hunger. Uh, it just made big, heavy noises, and then it fled. Hmm. Well, I suppose that deals with that. I am going to walk towards the end of the all the alleyway, but not not pursue it really, unless the others decide to. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. Yes. Alright, Bright sticking behind. Casimir, are you dashing out to try and, like, chase down this thing? No, I was just walking out. Oh, you're walking out too? Alright. Yeah. Are you walking or are you speed walking? Because you have, like, 50 feet of movement right now. It's pretty redonkulous. Uh, I will use my full 50 feet. <laughs> All right, you you power walk out of the alleyway. Uh, <laughs> I just have longer legs than everyone. Else. Yeah, well, Bright has one, so. <laughs> no, I got better. So no, we got better. Yes. When did when did Casimir get 50 feet? I don't remember that mutation. Um, I had 35 feet. I got five extra no, feet from. You're, you're missing the joke. <laughs> hey. Okay, that's all. Um, all right. Casimir's power walking, and we have to dash to keep up with him. That's yeah. not fair. <laughs> Slow down, you idiots! I was already closer to the front, so uh, hopefully, have a little bit of a head start. Maybe you should guys should just walk faster. Uh, all right. So the. Uh, the three of you walk out of the alleyway uh, with, Cypher. with Cypher. Now, uh, there is there is goo that Mordecai and Bright uh, will need to avoid. I mean, presuming you want to, you can just walk straight through it. Uh, but because it's splattered on the walls and the ceiling, um, it uh, I would want a uh, an acrobatics from uh, both of you if you want to go to the end of the alleyway and not brush up against the goo. I'm pretty good at this. Well, I'm pretty good when I don't roll a five on the dice. <laughs> so... Still a 17. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll... Uh... Does that include me too? Yes. I mean, you could stroll through it if you want. I won't stop you, but no, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want those mutations anymore. Okay, my legs got all wrong. Um, it's not attractive. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use a misty step, so I don't have to. Oh, 
Sure. Speak for herself. All right. Oh, uh, plus that misty stuff will help you catch up to Casimir. Uh, Casimir's yeah. casual stroll. It kind of sounds like a spell. Casimir's casual stroll. Um, Move fifty feet in yeah. six seconds. <laughs> You still, you still have your action in the <laughs> Um. All right. So Mordecai, yeah, you do. Uh, uh, you avoid it, but uh, I don't know. You have to get used to the fact of you know you you uh, your body is different in a good way, but also not the same way because you there were arguably benefits to being a vampire. Uh, maybe your muscles feel a little bit different, or actually they ache now that you're using them, and you get to feel them being used. But you you avoid the goop, um, just I'm kind of okay flavor. with them aching at this point. <laughs> Let's you know you're alive. And uh, and you see this uh, this uh, chained Hulk, um, kind of clump clump clump. Uh, it it has a pretty decent uh, mechanically. It has a forty foot move speed, so it will move faster natively than Bright and Mordecai without any sort of uh, trickery. Though, Casimir, you can keep up pretty well. Um, but it's not uh, its not terribly far ahead of all of you. I mean, just narratively in a round or two, you could, uh, at least uh, Casimir can catch up to it, and uh, the two of you could, uh, if you're dashing or Casimir does something. But it has its back turned to you all. Like, you see it, like, just getting ready to, to round a corner uh, in the city. Uh, and it it stops for a moment. Rah! It 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 roars down. Uh, th there's no mechanics. You don't need to like make a will save or anything. Um, but it it roars to you all, and uh, it takes uh, it takes a nearby uh, it takes like a a, a nearby uh, crate and kind of like dashes it into the alleyway and then continues running around a corner. Uh, trying to stop you from chasing after it, presumably. I don't know. I didn't want to chase him, but it seems no. like now that he wants... It seems like he really is worried that we might be chasing him, so maybe we should chase him. I mean, isn't that what they say? Find out what somebody wants you to do and then do the opposite? kind of don't want to waste time. No point in chasing a coward. Okay. I'll hit it with a sacred flame just for giggles. Uh, okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, make your attack at disadvantage, just because. Uh, it's uh, not the... an attack; it's a saving throw. Oh, it is. Oh, oh no, I was thinking of. Uh, I was thinking guiding of uh, bolt. guiding bolt. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you're lighting them up. Uh, no, uh, not yeah. spending any more spell slots on this guy. Come on. I mean. I won't stop. I'm not you. spending him any more spell slots. All right. So it's a DC 17 Dex save. Ooh. Yeah. Um. Ooh. Yeah. Apparently, oh, this giant is the most nimble thing ever here. Uh, and and you like you let off a uh, you let off your uh, uh, your sacred flame and and you hit like right where it was, but uh, it turns out maybe it's just like some chains flapping behind him. Uh, as it, uh, just, uh, avoids your, your attack. Oh, well. Otherwise, we're heading towards the pit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so things, uh, there's, uh, as it's running down the alleyway, too, its chains are, like, scraping and sparking, uh, against the, uh, against the, the brickwork, and... Uh, more to, uh, it sounds like all of you are willing to let this thing run away. <laughs> there is a, 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 a there's a traitor among us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I don't remember that game being so loud. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we're heading towards the pit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, going back, uh, or, I don't know, you can go back over the goop. You didn't necessarily have a bad problem of it, or you could just take a little extra time to navigate the alleyways. Not that there's not an exit, it's just 
a slight I, challenge getting back the I way you came. Was, I thought going, I thought going down this alley we were leading us toward the pit, and doubling back is the way we we're supposed to go. The the direction the giant ran isn't necess isn't taking you in that direction. So I thought I thought it was a T juncture. Yeah. That this this thing was coming down. Yeah. We had to hop over the goo in order to even get to that. Oh no, no no you're you're right yeah because the the little gribblers were inside the they, they were inside the one uh the inside bottom the part whole, of the T yeah Alex, not not, yeah. not in the uh not in the intersection nope you're correct sorry about that okay <laughs> okay. Doubling back seems like coming back the way we came, and that's not where we want to go. No, no. Well, it it was my misplacement of the goop. Uh, all right. So you have uh, you, you are declining the uh, following this giant thing here, uh, and you are making your way through the uh, through the city. There's various alleyways. You have the uh, you have the compass. You have the map. Um. And uh, if you recall, uh, Jaden was not kind of showing up on your compass. Uh, simply, it was a, a, just a, a no directional sort of a green flash or like a haze. Uh, it wasn't it's a nice. Still a low cake creature up. Yes, you do. Um, and uh, if if something hooks in a thousand feet, uh, yes. well, it, not that something. If Jaden hooks a thousand feet, yeah. then uh, you'll you'll catch on to that. Um. something here I wanted to do while you were in this part. I had my chase page open in my DMG and everything. Slack and Maddie. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, I, I mean, I was I was ready, but I didn't know if you were going to take the uh, uh, take the bait. No point. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, as you are navigating through, uh, and, and this is not a chase. No one is uh, throwing barrels or whatever. Uh, however, uh, coming down the uh, the street that you're still following in the general direction uh, of the of the pit. Um, there is a runaway cart that is just, and, uh, there is a person, a small person, I mean, saying it's a child, uh, maybe, I mean, but then again, Bright's the size of, like, what a half-orc child would be, uh, but there's someone in the cart giving a scream, um, and there's someone chasing behind the cart a good distance back. Uh, you are not in immediate danger of being crashed into it by, uh, or of uh, having this thing crash into you, uh, or really obstruct you in any particular fashion. Uh, but as it does, uh, as it does seem to be on a uh, on a, a runaway on the, on the cobblestones here, uh, in this part of town, uh, what would any of you like to do with this cart? Sidestep. Uh, easy yeah. enough? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't... I can only do the whammy on passerby, not on carts. So, I think I better just get out of the way of it, too. Mm. Although, is it full of vegetables? Because usually these things are full of vegetables. Uh, the contents, you're not sure, uh, as there are sides to the cart that you, you can't see over, especially from your vantage point, Bright. Uh, but there is there is a small creature inside, kind of going ah. Um, that's so vegetables don't usually make that noise. Um, I don't know. We've seen a lot of funny vegetables on this. Eh, on this yeah. We have. 
Okay. Well, no, I'll just go ahead and get out of the way. I'll, okay. I'll let, I'll let somebody else get run over by this cart. Simply sidestep it. Okay. Uh, Casimir, do you want to do anything to the cart occupant or the or this uh, creature chasing after the runaway cart? Oh, I uh, can't hear you. I would like to hit Wheel of Cart with Axe. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, does Sentinel stop movement? Yes. yes. Do you want to use Sentinel and try and, like, jam your axe in the in the wheel of the cart? Or do you just want to smack it on its way? I, I want to use Sentinel. Yes. Okay. And, uh, Professor Cypherius, uh, welcome. And, uh, it seems that you're able to, like, you've been studying the map. And by that, you've actually been creating the map very studiously. And by the way, if your character sheet doesn't show, you are down one spell slot from last session. Um, but that's really the that's the damage done. Uh, now for a warlock, you're like, oh, third of my spells. Uh, <laughs> but um, you are down one spell slot. Uh, you you look up from the map that you've been experimenting with and creating, and you do see that there's a, a runaway cart. Uh, Bright and Mordecai just kind of whoop step off to the side. And Casimir's bringing his axe down to try and, like, th throw it into the spokes or something of the wheel. Do you want to do anything, or do you just want to go casually go back to reading your map? Whoop. Uh, can't hear you. My apologies about that. Ah, hi. There you go. Uh, okay. So, I think I will just stick with reading the map at this point. Sure. Uh, I, 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 as uh, out of character, I am still trying to regain my bearings. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, if, if you have questions on things that's that's led up to this point, you're welcome to. Uh, oh, you you did no, you did not take hit point damage because that's why you used your your spell slot. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> having described you like this, I'm almost getting. If any of you saw the the old Disney animation for Ichabod like Sleepy Hollow. Like we have, we have Ichabod Crane, the like the the schoolmaster here, just walking into town with his nose in a book, and everything's going on around him. So yeah, Professor, you can. I mean, there's a cart rattling down. Uh, maybe you look up and give sort of a oh whatever a bored look, and you step to the side. Uh, Casimir, uh, using Sentinel, you tag. Um. Uh, you tag this cart, and it uh, it stops. Like you just stop all momentum here, uh, and uh, and bash up the wheel. Uh, the the cart does like a, a a scrape and a pivot, and the uh, the occupant uh, comes flying out. And actually, by that it looks like it is. Uh, uh, there are there were five occupants in there the whole time. Uh, just that one of them was screaming, the other ones were laying low. Uh, uh, bright remnants of maybe some kind of vegetable uh, are there. Like, they're they're kind of flappy tatters. Uh, I, maybe that's like a combo special in hell. Like, oh yeah, can I have an order of your flappy tatters? Um, comes spilling out and, uh, and just, is, like, is everywhere. But five of five more of these little red things that tried to pickpocket, and then eventually another gang of them uh, wanted to gang up on you all. Uh, but the one of them that was in the cart, ah, uh, like goes uh, goes flying, and the other uh, the other four just spill out uh, behind it and are all pretty roughed up. Uh, in old fourth edition, uh, in old fourth edition lingo, they are all bloodied. Um, uh, as they are, they're, um, uh, taking a tumble, like, they're, they're scraping, and there's, like, that ooze that's, uh, that's, like, leaving behind instead of blood. And, uh, one moment, because the thing, uh, the person chasing...
go. Uh, the person chasing uh, in this accented infernal, but with a weird kind of inflection, is just going, stop, stop, and uh, and then kind of slams the brakes on its hooves as uh, as the cart um, as as the cart crashes and. Uh, manages to just like uh, to avoid the um, uh, a part of the cart flipping up as it's grinding down to the cobblestones, and you see a person with the head of a goat, um, a tail with some spines on it too. Uh, definitely a, a mishmash of pieces and parts. Like, well, pretty well everyone here, in some way, at least compared to where you're from. And, uh, the, uh, this person just, like, stops, uh, puts its hands up to its horns, uh, and just, what? And looks around in dismay. You really shouldn't let your car get away from you, friend. It wasn't me. It was those little bastards. Well, it has been stopped. Uh, and the the little uh, the, the little critters are like getting up, and one of them is uh, uh, like one of them is like picking up the other like its friend's teeth. The other one's uh, bending over and uh, mooning this uh, this other creature, and a few of the others are kind of like ugh, ugh, a little stunned here. Damn things running amok in the city. Get out of here. What are these things? Nuisances. And and uh, it makes a very rude gesture with its fingers, presumably. It's nothing you recognize, but the intention is very clear. Start shooing the 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 little guys off. I would like to punt one. Uh, ooh, all right. Uh, so uh, one on Mordecai and one on Casimir. Uh, they actually shoot a firebolt at each of you uh, as they as they begin. <laughs> Um, and so the first one to Mordecai, uh, that is going to be a, oh, what was their modifier? Shame on me for derping out. There we go. Uh, that is going to be a 20 to hit. Do I have my reaction back? Um, oh. sure. It's kind of narrative, but you stopped it. And we've been saying that they've been kind of like mulling about trying to collect their teeth and their wits. So sure. I like I would like to hit it. Oh, okay. Because I can use Sentinel Mulligan. Uh, you hit it, and it was already, it was already bloodied, uh, and so you, you, you see that this thing, uh, cause, Casimir, you got a good look at them as they started to do their little casty casts, uh, and you just, like, take you rip your axe out of the broken wheel and you just bring it down and just like <clears throat> you just turn it into paste uh now the you kill it though i do need both mordecai and casimir to make a constitution saving throw as its goo ends up uh all around all right casimir you're trying, aren't Casimir? You you're throwing the. I, I guess you are technically throwing them, but you're throwing them. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to roll a percentile. Mordecai, you're uh, you, you feel like you're you, you're very quick. Like it just lands on you, and you kind of quickly. Um, well, let's see. You have. Uh, you probably don't want to use your hand. Uh, I don't know. You you uh, you, you take your your shirt and you kind of like 
stretch it real quick to flick it. Uh, to mm-hmm. flick some of the, the fiend sauce off of you here. Um, though, Casimir uh, really just gets a face full of fiendish goo. And, uh, and then kind of like begins to twitch. And what happens is... Oh, Casimir, uh, your ears now tear free from your head and fly off. You are deafened. Darn it. Oh. Um. Well. Mordecai. Uh. Well, let's see. So, so the reaction would have prevented the first attack. The second attack will... Uh, I'll go on to... Well, I don't... Casimir in 18 doesn't hit you, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you dodge out of the way. You smack the one. Uh, Mordecai, uh, make a dex save. Dex save. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mordecai, you try really hard to catch one of Casimir's errant ears. Uh, but I'm like, you, you just catch onto one and it just sort of like, and it slips out of your, it slips out of your grip and the ears just sort of fly off. But for a second, you thought maybe you could catch Casimir's ears before they flew away. That's unfortunate. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to use a sacred flame on the little guy who tried, who tried to attack Casimir directly. Okay. Um. Ooh. Nope. And so that one will also go splort. Um. And I would like I would like the two of you to make another con save, please. Casimir, another nine. What the heck? My, my goodness, my dude. Do his ears grow back? Uh, oh. We'll, oh, and Mordecai also. I'm going to collect them all. Uh, <laughs> That's a you're trying. One. Siege would be proud. Siege would be proud of all this mutation. Um, Casimir will collect them all and then evolve them. All right. So what happens? <laughs> Casimir, your feathered ears flee your head. And then uh, just shortly thereafter, in this process... A pair of wings, either feathered or leathery, sprout from the target's back, granting it a flying speed of 30 feet. <laughs> I'm just going to edit the ears off and put them on his back. And march them. Uh, now, that said, though, Casimir, you are wearing armor. And so this is this is going to be... Ar- he actually does not... His design does not have armor in the back. It's, well, he has scales on the back, but it's not like the plate. Uh, I think we're still going to need a a particular consideration for wings. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, because scale armor mechanically, like, doesn't have the the noise penalty for sneaking, etc. But I I don't think it was necessarily made for a pair of large wings to rupture from your flesh. Um, so... I can can fix it if if stuff breaks. I have smith stools. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you, you can, but, uh, to, to set up the scene, uh, because the other things are just going to scurry away, so I'm, I guess unless you want to tag them, uh, you can, but, uh, but what I'm going to say, Mordecai, is, uh, oh, uh, by the way, I'm sorry, I need you to roll up a percentile as well, because you also, uh, oh, are, uh, oh, uh, Casimir, one of your legs grows longer than the other. Uh, or what I will do is this, if you prefer. No, I already got the mutation. No, no, no. Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This was Mordecai. Mordecai. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, we can mechanically, you're going to get the same thing, where your walking speed will be reduced by ten feet. But what we can do is either make one of your legs longer than the other. Or kind of give you like elephantitis of the tail, and so it's just so like thick or heavy that it's slowing you down. (laughs) 
So what would you like, Mordecai? This shaven legs or tail elephant titus? Shaven tail. Ugh. Don't like either one of those. Uh very fat tail. Okay, you get a potato tail. <laughs> a po tail. A po tail. <laughs> Now, uh, how far are these, just, uh, just as a qu- as a question, how far are these things away from me specifically? Oh, I mean, this happened pretty close by. You just you you sidestepped. They're maybe twenty feet at most. Cool. Uh, let me just check something real quick. So no, they're not close to me. I don't want to get bopped by them again. Uh, no, I mean, the, you you two ran up on the ones that were closest, and the others, uh, they were in a, a light I didn't scatter. Run anywhere, I said. So. Well, I, no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, that's... There's five, right? There were so five, yes. Two, two were dead. Two, yep, two, two were, were down. dead, so there's three left. Yep. Cool, Are I'd you... like to tag each other with an Eldritch Blast. Pew, 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 all right. Pew, pew, pew. Basically, Scythe is still reading his map, and he just very absentmindedly swings his hand and starts flinging, uh... <laughs> His hyperspheres at uh, at each of the targets. First sure. one. Hit. Second one. Oh yeah. Third one. Oh yeah, for days. <clears throat> Thirteen S- for the first one. Splat. Splat. Eight for the second one. Six for the third one. Close, but splat. Yeah, basically. You, you you guys uh standing there. You just see Cipher basically just raise his head and start kind of conducting in the air, and you see the hyperspheres fly out and <laughs> splatter these things. He's not he's not even looking up as he does this. He's still reading. He's still looking over what he's done. He's just doing this very absentmindedly, uh, as so if it were. He got stuff, and that's all I needed. <laughs> yep. Uh, so what we'll say, um. Uh, Casimir, uh, you drop and you begin to, like, you begin to, like, writhe and, and, like, groan in pain as your armor currently is acting almost like a cocoon, as your back ripples like the flesh of a water-drenched, um, mogwai, uh, or a, a gremlin if you've seen the movie. Um, now, Mordecai, I... Maybe, maybe new Mordecai is not compelled to help or anything along those lines. You could simply stand there and watch uh, Casimir writhe. But Casimir, there's a growing pressure in your armor as your uh, as your back starts to like rip itself open. That looks unpleasant. Um, oh, right, we're supposed to help. I ran over and <laughs> started undoing it. But I don't want to get any goop on uh, the, that's, why I, that's why I'm kind of standing back. I don't want goop on me. Yeah, um, I'll, we'll just say for sake of convenience, Casimir, uh, Casimir's face got gooped. That's probably why the ears fled. Uh, but apparently it uh, it's sort of also uh, contaminated the circulatory system, which you shouldn't have direct contact with unless you also wanted to... If, if either of you want to stab Casimir... I mean, he's pro, not really expecting it. I give you like a guaranteed crit if you hit, and you get you can hit with advantage. But if you don't, all right, whatever. But uh, yeah, if you want to go over and help unbuckle Casimir, you can. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. Um, Mordecai, are you helping or watching? I am simply seeing if there's anything pinging on my locate creature yet. Nothing yet, no. Hmm. Uh, Bright, you go over and you start helping unbuckle. And Casimir, uh, you know, you, you you know this armor. You made it yourself. And so, you know, there's a couple things you're starting, you know, you're this and you're like, oh, little one to buckle or whatever. Um, or uh, honestly, you can fix it. So, uh, Bright, do you carry a dagger on you? Yeah, of course. Um, you could probably just cut the straps. That would be a lot easier. Well, if I, I mean, if I have to. You don't. Oh, you could watch Casimir writhe in pain in the middle of the street. Okay, well, I was looking for a third option where I could just, like, unbuckle it. If it's not working, then I'll cut the straps. It's okay. 
bright. Okay, so you do that, Casimir. Like you, you flip over, and and your back is like involuntarily arching. Like, oh, this is extreme pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, bright. You peel away the armor, and there's just a large bulbous like bump underneath Casimir's skin, and like it, it's there's something moving under his skin. Now you are holding a knife. Uh, and Casimir, uh, I won't put words in your mouth, but probably something like, get it out, get it out, or something. Because you you feel something moving inside you. Uh. Huh. So, you're, you're gonna, like, give birth to an alien? <laughs> well, I guess... Out his back. I guess, ah, now we, I guess now we know where Gribblers come from. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I'm gonna stand back and I'm gonna use my mage hand. And I uh -huh. use the mage hand to cut the the thing open. Although, I, it's only because I, I uh, don't want to get goo. Sure. Alright. Bright, uh, you stand... Are you the armor open? No, this is you. I'm cutting you open. Okay. Yeah, just you. Not your not your armor. We have our priorities straight. You said, you said thing. I was, I, was, I was double checking. Um... As you do then, uh, Bright, there's a moment where you you see your mage hand uh, wielding this dagger and cutting down the exposed flesh of Casimir through this great lump in his back. And a pair of wings sprout out. Uh, Casimir, would you like leathery or feathery? Leathery. Um, okay. And you see a pair of silver wings sprout out from the uh, the lump on Casimir's back. And for a second, Bright, there's like a... Has this happened before? And just... I don't know. You, you may proceed about your business, but congratulations, Casimir. It's a pair of wings. Also, racking pain and probably some damage. But we'll we'll cover that when it's out of narrative time. So, okay. um, I guess I don't even bother to say anything. It's not like he could hear me. Anymore. Oh yeah, th those old ears are long gone. So you could—I okay. don't—you could try and cut new holes in the side of Casimir's head. That might help. No, no, I'm, but I'm—I'm I'm cutting the the um, you know the excess skin away. You know, make sure that there's plenty of room for these leather wings to get out. Oh yeah. Okay. That's painful. Snip, 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 I turn back to the goat friend. Well, that takes care of your problem. It does. I'm going to fix our Just going to come back, but for now. Hmm. My wagon is damaged, but I have most of my goods. I appreciate the help. Hard to find here these days. Ever since the pit opened up, things have only gotten tougher. But it only makes sense that the people who helped you should get compensated. Oh, right. Um, I can offer you some skin roll-ups, or perhaps, um, I can give you more information. What about this pet? When did it open? <laughs> Uh, none of us exactly know when. Oddly enough, though it couldn't have been too long despite it feeling like it's always been here. Uh, it's very difficult to explain. Is it for entertainment purposes? Yes, you can go and see fights. 
You can see who is better, who is stronger. Any people of note who've won, like recently. Not that I'm aware. I avoid the pit and its leaders at all costs. I came in with a caravan not too long ago. We had harvested some flesh to roll as snacks. We are here for simple business. Well, if you don't really know much about the pit, I guess we'll be moving on. If you wanted to help more people, you could always address the source of those little laughing bastards. What is the source of that? There is, well, no, I think it's more like was, a circus outside of town called the Trine. Though, ever since the pit came, they've been on hard times. And those little red things worked at this circus. A carnival, if you will. But since they've been out of work, they've been coming into the city to steal and take things back. Uh, very like circus people. I know, right? Well, can you point us in the exact direction of the pit? The pit is always in the center of the city. You just have to continue going down and down. Uh, I guess I should thank you, but at the same time, I'm kind of upset about the wheel. We'll just call it even. We'll call it even. Stay out of trouble. Uh, as you talk, you've seen that this thing has uh, taken its barbed tail, and, and while it has been maintaining a conversation with you, it's taken the bar the sharp kind of slightly hooked barbs on its tail and it's been raking it over the street where it's been picking up these uh, spilled flesh strips and uh, and putting it back in the in this tilted cart. Uh, then this uh, foul kind of goat person uh, looks and uh, kind of uh, it, like picks it up by where the wheel still somewhat is and walks beside it, like, pulling it along instead of being able to push it or pull it from front or behind. Oh, well, to the center of the city, then. Okay. Oh, my tail feels massive right now. Yeah, you... <laughs> uh... Ooh. Um... And, yeah, you all, uh... I, I mean, maybe you weren't exactly looking, uh, or how we want to narrate this, uh, but yeah, your your tail has swollen, Mordecai, uh, and it's uh, it's slowing you down uh, because of its girth. Usually, it kind of just sways. Now it's just drag dragging on the ground, and the tuft is getting tangled. Yeah, and you don't know where that ground has been. Um, it just march slowly forward. If it helps, uh, your massive tail uh, actually was hiding a, a, f a flesh strip. So if you want to snack on it, uh, actually, like as you lift it up, there's kind of a <coughs> and there's like a, a wet, uh, a wet piece of skin, of flayed skin that was stuck to the underside. But the goat already wandered off, so eh, you can keep it if you want. Let's stay in the pocket. 
Okay, sure. Um, you can add one ration to your inventory if you'd like. You may want to. Okay. You may want to specify that it's a a, a skin roll up, but. Words. I didn't think I was going to hit. Well, start heading towards the pit ever slower. Okay. Um. I'm not excited about how long this is taking. Yes, in fact, uh. Now that you have, I guess, kind of an idea, uh, you, you are getting a coalescence of this indicator, which always seems to be like a downward, a, a slightly downward pointing, slightly curving line. And after your interaction, maybe because this thing made you aware of it, or maybe you had been the whole time, or I don't know, you've been kind of wandering around. Um, there's, uh, it does seem like the city just kind of is going in a slight spiral. Hmm. Weird. Weird. Shall we keep going? Yeah, but I'm worried now. I'll, I'll put up a, an illusion for Casimir, and, and I'll say, what are we going to do for your ears? I know you don't want to take a berry but to be able to hear and do I do I need to hear I, mean, I guess not I have one good eye okay well, that's, no, no, that's, he is. that's 25% as many sensory organs as the rest of us <laughs> so Mordecai what are you going to do I mean we only have seven berries left and the Professor, speaking of the professor, how's he doing? Is he is he acclimating to his new crusty self, or is he still gimped for? Yeah, pr professor, you you're scabby again, or scabrous. <laughs> okay, that that is something I need to know, because I need to adjust things in that case. Yeah, you you have reverted. You you woke up to relieve yourself, and uh, in the process of waking up and doing so, you found out that you were covered in scabs again. I can wait. Okay. It just makes it a little harder to move. I'm not exactly the strongest being in the world. Yeah. Okay. Well, Casimir is... I don't know. I mean, I know he doesn't want to change back, but he might have to. Or he can swim in Gribbler Goop until his ears grow back. Who knows how long that'll take. I don't know that that will happen. <clears throat> well, if you decide to do it, I will take notes. So anyway, the... Might as well get something out of it, right? Yeah, so anyway, the upshot of all of it is that... We should probably try to find more berries. And... Put up another minor illusion <laughs> that says, You can locate plants, right? Yes. That okay. I can do. Maybe... I'll put up another minor illusion that says <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could locate them. some berries. I could do that. Do you guys want to spend ten minutes? I mean, time seems to get away from us pretty easily here, so mm -hmm. maybe we could walk while you locate. I'll put up a minor illusion. <laughs> Ten minutes to cast. Was that what you're on about? Is what was it? Is it that it takes ten minutes to cast? It's a ritual spell. Rangers can't perform rituals. Okay, they're, they're not. They're not. No, they're not ritual casters. Mm -hmm. Oh, good to know. I can I can use this spell slot then. It was just listed as ritual on my thing. It is a ritual spell, but rangers do not ritual casters. Yeah. 
Nice. All right, so you're going to spend a spell slot? Yeah. All right, and let me see the spell real quick, like. Um... Well, the voice of nature sounds like it got a real bad cold. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not exactly what you're used to hearing. Um, however, um, uh, however, you... You cast your spell, and there is a... Uh, there is an immediate bing, uh, or, or kind of the voice of nature, but it's, it's more, I don't know, it has that accented infernal, uh, to it. And fortunately you can hear this voice cause it is all in your head. Um, and it points across the street to a, I guess a shop and the shop has a picture of a plant on its on its placard. Right there. You guys should use your eyes sometimes. <laughs> the plant, though, seems like it has a mouth. So it's a little odd. But, you know, it's still kind of a plant. I wonder what they would take for currency. I have plenty of gold. Who knows what they want down here? But we'll find out. We can always take some currency off some mook. Let's go. Let's go look. Okay. You can always try and pickpocket someone, Bright. <laughs> yeah, I think I can do better than that. There, there are. Uh, by the way, there are still ambient people. Uh, I mean, when you were having the card interaction, some people stopped and were like, "Uh, eh, you know, they're they're rubbernecking." Um, some of them could actually do that much better than others. But yeah, there's there are people around uh, to interact with too. It's not a it's not a destitute uh, place that you're in. It's sort of like a, a very claustrophobic stacked area, like what this picture is indicating. Okay. Uh, well, we um we don't um we don't need that just yet. Um, let's just find out what they want first. Maybe you know who knows. Maybe I already have enough gold. Survives. <laughs> Got plenty in my pockets right now. Okay. Uh, all four of you going inside the plant shop? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it, for the most part, it is laid out as a shop in Mesomasca, or Mesotopia even, uh, would be laid out. The varieties of plants certainly look different. Uh, darker, some are a little bit more withered. Um, some of them, uh, some of them have, uh, mouths? Do the and ones with mouths look like Herbert? Yeah. Okay. A couple of these flowers are actually looking pretty similar, Mordecai, and bright. <laughs> to things you've seen before in the flower fields. Oh, to the flower fields. Oh, that's interesting. Like corpus creeper plants, or are we talking about the century vines? Yes. Or the wild magic flowers. Yes. Oh. That bird's poorly. No, not really. No, uh, that means that they're cultivatable. At least we can grow them here. And they're cultivatable in our plane. The flower fields did it. Yes. Yeah. They certainly do. Well, why don't why don't we go in and find out find out what's going on? Okay. Uh, so you go to uh, you go to cross the street, and you do so. Ha <laughs> ha. DM gotcha. <laughs> uh, you walk in as per usual, and there is a um. Uh, there is someone behind the counter that I vaguely looks humanoid. There's a head, but no real shoulders. Think kind of like a, a round-edged... Well, no. Think like a... If a piece of candy corn was green, 
uh, had some little wings and wore a very opulent robe of some uh, high station or wealth. Uh, this is what greets you. Oh, uh, a, oh, what's that? It's a fall guy. It, it, kind of. Probably a little wider at the base though than than at the top. But yeah, kind of, kind of like that. May I help you? In this for a broken and type of plant. Of course, I carry all plants here. What type yeah. do you wish to possess? Do you have any that produce berries? <laughs> Uh, and I mean, even like his his several chins like are jiggling and also making kind of a, a cackling giggle uh, just from like rubbing and and vibrating along with his uh, resonant laugh. <laughs> yes, berries, berries galore. It's Pizza the Hut. What do you wish the berries to do? <laughs> And I motion for Bright to show him what yeah. kind we need. Yeah, I'll show him. I'll show him one of the berries. Oh yes. Uh, I don't know how you came across these, but there you go. You got them. <laughs> Looking to get more. I can assist you. I suppose then the question. Will well, just becomes how many, and what could you possibly trade me? Well, we're new in town. We're not entirely sure what kind of currency you accept in Oiho. We can accept uh, perhaps something as mundane as metals, though that's perhaps common. I am always interested in things a little less <laughs> tangible, and like some like splatter. Not not like the mu mutating uh, mutating goo uh, splatters out, but you're just getting like thick saliva is uh, is coming out. As he he kind of leans over and a little shower emits from his. Uh, his very creepily wide smile with thin lips and a lot of really small teeth like Tic Tacs. What would you say to some platinum? Platinum. I may have some. I perhaps can use more. So. Is there a particular service you might have in mind? No job is too small or too low. <laughs> you don't even know why he has to laugh like that. I mean, he's purposely sticking his tongue out. <laughs> There's always things that I need done around here. A busy man such as myself always has things to do. We are also very busy. Yeah, but we also really need these plants. Look, we've got, look how many kind of plants there are. I mean, corpus creepers, we could use those, and uh, wild magic flowers, and it looks like he's even got some herberts, and who knows what else he's got. Maybe he's got something else extra fun. And the berries. There's a Honor. lot of, there's a lot of plants. We're, we're really, really in the business yes. of collecting plants. The yew berries are very attractive to those who use them. <laughs> what did, what did you call them? You berries. Oh, okay. Is that not what you know them by? Actually, wait a minute. And he's going to lean over the counter, uh, and uh, like he's leaning real close, like he's right by the edge, but like one of his chins starts to slide off the edge of the counter, and he kind of like scoops it and puts it back. Um. He's looking. He's looking at all of you, uh, in uh, bright, in particular you. 
Um, he's sizing you up, but he doesn't make any further comment. But also, his his uh, demeanor doesn't necessarily change. Um, Size small. You are particularly new here. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I've been getting that. I'll I'll look better tomorrow. I promise. Uh, well, <laughs> perhaps I see why you need the you berries. <laughs> I can With gold perhaps and platinum spice. take some gold and platinum. Uh, for now. <laughs> but I have a feeling that you might want to come back eventually for more. <laughs> Do you have a plant of this kind for sale? The plant? No, the berries, yes. And Mordecai puts ten platinum on the counter. What would this buy me? Hmm, one moment, please. And he picks up your coin and begins to examine it. Uh, just, uh, he has a very, like, uh, when I say a heavy brow, it's not because of, like, a strong forehead, but just kind of a droopy one. And so he takes his upper and, and lower eyelid and just uses his hand to pry open his eye. And he just gets, like, really close to it. And you just see his eye scanning over. Hmm, uh, mother of this currency. It's yes. genuine, I promise. Uh, where it's from doesn't matter so much that it's pure. And it is. That's what I meant. What about gold and silver and copper? They might be worth more down here, who knows? Well... I do also have a bit of those. Uh, how many platinum uh, are you offering? There's ten on the counter currently. Ten, okay. Yeah. <sighs> this, perhaps I can turn around. Hmm. Um, Mordecai, uh, you... I'll offer this to you because you presumably have the best chance through perception to pick this up. Mm -hmm. uh, especially because, well, Casimir's also deaf. Oh, you're oh, you're deaf too, aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh no, you're cause, no because you you took a you took a berry. Uh, go is. ahead, and I want you to make a perception at disadvantage. Yikes. Uh, whammies. Oh what? No, oh, that's Why a red a number. One? That's a red number. That's a whammy. Okay, uh, I mean he. That's a whammy. He right now. He's he's kind of burbling under his breath as as he's thinking. Yes, I can give you. <sighs> I'd say twenty you berries for this. But I are can you promise the only you, in town? they are potent. You berries, just, just slime. Uh, not not mutatious slime, but uh, thick saliva. Just. Bleh. Well, let's find out what other highest other quality. Other no, I, I wasn't saying that. I was saying let's find out what else, what else you want. Is there something that you want? Done because look, you've got, they've got so many plants here. We could take the whole shop back with us, practically. <laughs> no, I doubt from where you come from, these things could survive. They're you know, special plants. Yeah, we, we know that there's. Oh, well, there's too much noise. Um, well, there's a. There's a or maybe it's not, oh, maybe it's lethality. I don't know. Somebody's making noise. Um, anyway, um, yeah, there's there's been a lot of uh, a lot of 
progress towards towards that actually where we come from. I mean, people are growing. Yeah, people are growing these. We call these corpus creepers, and people are growing these. They're they're actually kind of taken over. These are the wild magic flowers, and then um, then we I even had one of these for a little while, and I'll point to a Herbert. I called him Herbert. Cute. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, a lot of these plants are, are starting to turn up back where we come from, and uh, yeah, I, 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 we're just. We just want to stay ahead of the curve, you know. Well, get in on that kind of business. Maybe even bring some profits. You could always bring me coin gems. Yeah, I take them. Boring stuff. However, as you are newly arrived, or perhaps something happened in your rebirth. I haven't figured out which yet, and I don't want to be insensitive. It's... Uh, you could simply bring me some experiences. You can supply them yourself, or you can take them from others if you favor the pit. Pit. You can try to get stuff there. Experiences or precious things. The things that other people own as memories, as property. Mm, you could also... How would one provide you with these experiences? Mm, you simply give them... If you've not done it, I understand your question. <laughs> drip, drip, drip. I'm looking for succulent to juicy like the berries. Things that have been done so that I can possess them too. I simply need you to supply them. Think about them. The things that hurt. <laughs> the things that cause mm, feelings. <laughs> like a little spray bottle through his uh, teeth. Do you oh, we, uh, I'm sorry, real quick. Both my headphone just gave out again, and Laws of Gods and Men is rating. So, hi, everyone. Uh, I am playing a very juicy NPC right now, so I hopefully I'm not spitting on you through the camera. Uh, I'm sorry, what were you saying, Coffee? I, I told him that I have plenty of those kinds of experiences. Does Are that you... mean that he takes them forever? <laughs> yes, it's just like you're giving up your coins. <laughs> I don't get them back. No. They're mine until I give them to someone else. That is a type of currency as is favor. You could do something for me as well if you don't want to part with your own. Well, I don't mind parting with somebody else's. Uh, and I happen to be pretty good at that sort of thing. Um, so, it's definitely, definitely interesting. So, but the next thing is, um, what kind of favors? There is some problems that have been growing in Oihul oh, ever since those... this pit had opened at oh, it's some those point. Stupid squishy creatures, right? The little red ones from the yeah. circus. Like rats. Yes, ever since the train was shut, they have nothing better to do than <laughs> rob and Steal and cause mischief beyond the normal gotcha your kidney games the kids play. <laughs> the pit has taken their place as a source of entertainment, and so no one goes to trine.
but the choice is yours. I will take what you have in several ways. Or you For can now. perhaps go and stop. As you would earn a lot of mm, reputation and clout. And I guess says clout like the just the from one from one long side to the other just licks across the the small white teeth bleh, clout with others. Though you'd piss off the owner of the pit something fierce. I presume you know not to speak the name. We've been told. For now, there's coin. If we need more later, we'll have other things. Unless you want direct transportation to the pit. <laughs> we don't mind taking the, the scenic route. We're still learning our way around. I see. Enjoy your descent. Sound of feasting horn. Maybe we should find a place to stay before we before we go the rest of the way. It seems like going down there is kind of a special special deal. Yeah. Certainly. Well, here is that ten platinum we'll take. Oh, you're gonna buy them? Yes. Seems like the easiest route for now. We we're not that desperate though, we've still got seven. That's enough for an extra store. It's a lot of money. What else are we going to spend it on, Bright? Well, I wasn't planning on staying here forever. There's lots of things to spend it on back home. Okay, out of character, how much money do we actually have? <laughs> Mordecai Mordecai has three thousand and four gold and hundred and forty four platinum. Well, all right then, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about spending money. I'm still pinching bronzes. <laughs> We're so used to printing bronzes. We've never had any actual form of money until now. To be fair, Mordecai's also been the wallet of the crew. It's true. <laughs> I'm still looking at like, oh, I had two gold. That's a lot of money. And I'm just tossing around ten platinum. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he'll put, he'll put, uh, how much did he say that they were? Like two platinum each? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, no, 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 no. You, Half uh, a platinum each. Two for a platinum. Yeah, you're, you're getting two for a platinum. Two for a platinum? Okay. And then he, he put... told you that these are higher, like high quality berries too. Okay. Then yeah, I'll give him the 10 and we'll take 20. Okay. You have 20 U berries. Or if you want to put like HQ U berries. That's fine. I'll add them to the seven that we have. Thank you for your hospitality. Um, I I am going to uh, before you do depart. I I do need to at least prompt uh, lethality through Professor Cypherius real quick. Uh, Professor, I you did a tune to the map. And the map is allowing you to put your thoughts and your observations onto uh, onto a map, is what you're seeing here. So it's it's a little bit more detailed than this, but you're seeing your landing area, you're seeing the foggy war zone, this sort of outland area where you bury the big gold coin, the bridge you crossed, and now you're starting to fill in a map of uh, of Oiho as you're experiencing it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I so, uh, with this person indicating that there is uh, this other location, uh, presumably you might be able, to, uh, if you wanted it, you could get information that could put this uh, circus on your map. Yeah, I might do that. Okay. Uh, I, I will include this in the exchange before you say your goodbyes, Mordecai. Uh, but simply because Lethality wasn't here for this, I wanted to offer that as a, as a, a in-kind gesture. So fair enough, I, I, I thank you for that. Let's 
looks like I've got a circus to burn down. Well, uh, shall we get going then? Uh, by the way, for both Mordecai and Bright, as both of you were here, just I don't. Th well, Bright, uh, I think you would have you would have seen Mordecai, but Mordecai, I don't think would have seen you. Uh, you recall? I mean, Trine is uh, you know in our modern out of character is a little archaic uh, term, but there was a place that you both had been to called Trine before. It was a bar, right? Yes, it was a bar. Yeah, it, it, was. It, it was a working Joe's bar that a lot of the Flowerfield Estate uh, people and other sort of people of the oh, land wow. would go to. It was that it was, was the, the local ago. bar that had yeah. uh, that had the woodshed out back. Yeah, I remember that place. I don't remember the name of it. Mm. How weird! Wow. How interesting. You know where they got the name then. Yeah, it's, it's nice to know that there's a lot of connections between the flower fields in this place. I think if we had some leverage, we might have more success against the flower fields next time. Uh, Professor, and by the way, the, the purpose for this, not exactly that you know where this place is, but simply from the context clues so far, the fact you know that it exists and it has been described to you in a particular fashion, uh is making it more real for you and the more real it is like the more observable the more uh the more you're aware it seems as if this is a manifested thing or a path a way to get there would be set because you're aware of the fact that it even does exist so mm. having this on your map presumably means that you could go there if you decide to do so uh, but it okay. is it, it is outside the city. You would have to leave the city again in order to leave, or to, to go there. Hmm. All right. Well, I will. Yeah. I will share this information. Yeah. 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 We were all there. I don't think we need to. Well, let's um, let's take our leave of the of the shop, and I'll, I want to tell Pizza the Hut that uh, I'll be back to buy some more Herberts and Corpus Creepers later. <laughs> Good luck out there. I think you're going to need it. <laughs> Thank you. Your name was. You may call me Nick. Thank you, Nick. That's not Have as fun of a name. I try goes to leave. It's not a fun name. I got it while shaving. Now get out of here! <laughs> okay, so let's find a place to stay. I mean, we have the we have the dome, but I think finding a place that's off the beaten path a little bit, or, you know, just a nice room that we could put the dome in, that mm. might be nice. Sounds like a good plan to me. We, we still need our air conditioning. We do. Nice temperate weather. That's the nice thing about the dome. Uh, as you leave this uh, very uh, corpulent uh, and and opulent, uh, co copulent. Anyway. No, that was the other place. That's where Celine <laughs> went. <laughs> oh. Wait, what? That's where Celine went. Oh. To see the blue dragon lady. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh. It, uh, <laughs> uh, you are leaving and, uh, there are, uh, walking down the, uh, the, walking down the street are another pair of these very smooth gold baby faced, but like burly looking people, uh, carrying these very wicked pole axes and, um, they stop and they look at you in particular, Bright. Everybody's looking at me. And uh, and in your mind, as they are, t uh, they're speaking to you telepathically. Um, both of them through telepathy, but still with their own 
different voices. Why, or not why, how did you get in here like this? I'm... I passed the test. You should not have been allowed in here, looking as you do. There are yeah. rules in this city. Yeah, I promise I'll look better tomorrow. You look better now, or we will be forced to remove you. Mm, that's not gonna work for me. I, um... I, I don't, um... I can't look the way you want me to in the way that you see it right now. Does that make sense? No, but yes. Good. Is Bright talking out loud? And do we all hear it or no? Uh, Bright, are you replying psychically? Presumably um, they can I, hear, I but it's care. not really... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I probably I probably say it um cuz I'm not used to psychic communication at least okay. not that comes from somebody else so um I would I would probably I mean we do a lot of psychic communication let's be honest but <laughs> still I probably I mean I say my sendings out loud <laughs> so I'd probably say this out loud <laughs> okay so, she's addressing these two people as you've heard her address them. Are they... Are they having a fit about what you're wearing? Well, not what I'm wearing. I'm just... I don't have any... I don't have any fiend on me. And they want me to, to be more fiendy. So, um, they, they don't... I don't know. I mean, the guards let me in. I passed the test. She did pass the test. I say to the, the, the statues. They... They look at each other. They, I guess, say something, but you can't overhear a psychic conversation. Uh, and then, uh, Bright, you are addressed once more. We will administer it again to make sure. Good grief. We need okay. to understand that you are not as you appear on the inside as you are on the outside. Does that matter? Oh, you, you cannot hear this. Oh, I can't hear that. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like they want to administer another test. Bright, are you wishing to say or do anything before they do this? No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, make an intelligence saving throw at advantage. Okay. Fifteen! Mm. Oh, jeez. Uh, that might end up being enough, though. Hang on. Um, How in the... A three and a five on the dice with advantage. Yeah. My goodness. It's like my not one on perception when I have a plus fifteen modifier. Or plus I just plus realized I had a, a plus one. Can I use my plus one? I just saw it in the chat now. Oh oh yeah, by the way, I I'm sorry. Yeah, uh Raven Raven gave each of you and me a plus one. I would uh, I definitely would use it. Okay. Here. Then uh that is fine. And you hang on, let me mark this off before I forget. Uh, Cypher DM Bright. Boy, I miss being able to rig the dice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like, you I are... like the enchanter powers, but I like the divination powers too. <laughs> uh, you do feel your your brain, uh, your, your noodle stirred around a little bit. Uh, however, they are... Uh, they are s convinced of your... Uh, your selfish intentions or your evilness in some way uh, such that um, they are content. So, besides being harassed by guards, as per this encounter, uh, you, uh, you're you not stabbed by the guards or ejected oh, by the guards. 
Um, That's good. Uh, yeah. But as I was trying to inflict enemies abound on you, um, can you give us a little, you know, unbeknownst to what the characters, like the other characters think, uh, as this spell started to manifest, what would be like a glimpse? Like, how would you view one of the other three as an enemy uh, in that moment your brain took to start up but then reject the spell? Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to interpret that. Um, do you mean like why would I think they're enemies, or like, yeah, to... it, because well, the, the spell the spell makes you think that there's enemies everywhere. Kind of makes you paranoid, right. such that you right. want to lash out. What would right. be a quality about one of them? Like it's, you're giving us as the DM and the audience a little peek into Bright's uh, twisted little mind here. Like, what would be the first thing to come up? Like, ah, oh, I never trusted that Mordecai because uh, he he's a vampire or I hate undead or something. Or, like, what what is a vicious little thing about one... I mean, if you want to throw in a couple more about the other characters, you can you can vent now if you want. But uh, give us a little bit of bright psychology on the inside. Well, um, I mean, it's, it's obvious that I'm only keeping Mordecai around because we need him. Uh, he's, he's always been such a waste of potential. Mm -hmm. And even when he was, back when he was a, a tiefling, and then when he was a vampire, and then when he's a human again, it's, he's always holding himself back and getting in his own way. And, um, you know, sooner or later, yeah. somebody's going to have to put him out of his misery. I, and I'm Jade's sorry. not around to do it, so... I'm sorry, Mordecai. I don't really mean that. <laughs> it's only because I'm evil. That's <laughs> 100% valid, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Mordecai, you you might be fire resistant, but like your ear is kind of burning and itching a little bit right now. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I can probe these things. <laughs> I'm a vampire storyteller for a reason. Yes. Uh, all right, so, so that that uh, instantaneously flashes in your mind, bright, uh, and that actually seems to have the guards uh, accept you uh, as uh, as being of. Uh, a citizen in good standing of uh, Oiho, and uh, you can uh, you can go about your business. Okay. Uh, all right. So after a um, after this interaction, and you are continuing to uh, to spiral down. I presume you you still want to go to the pit, or are you looking for a place to stay, or a, a little bit We're of both? Looking for a place to stay, like an inn. Sure. Um, there are places that look opulent. There are places that look run down. Uh, what, what is your desire? Something nice. Something nice? Mordecai has platinum burning a hole in his pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Mordecai, you want someplace nice. And, uh, what is nice to you? Mordecai, what do you deserve? Mordecai, for most of his life, spent, spent his, spent his time amongst the lowest of the low when it comes to the citizens of Mesomasca. He was part of a traveling circus mm. on the road all the time. And so and before that he was a tinkerer, wasn't necessarily the most well off person. So something fitting a king. Okay. Or Mordecai's perceptions thereof, maybe not necessarily that ritzy, but sure, something sure. nice with like feather pillows, down you, comforters. You've read a lot of fairy tales about uh, Mesotopia or Mesomasca in particular. You know, the, the, kind of the we, we hear about the the fairy tale kingdoms and the lavish, you know, accoutrement that uh, that the royalty uh, got to live in, on, or around, and. Um, you were traveling, and you uh, there is such an old uh, an old style, you know, because you're from Oldport, if I recall correctly. 
And yeah. Old Port is like the early architecture from when the settlers first came to Mesomasca and then even further into Mesotopia. And you find a place that is is like like right out of a storybook. I mean, it has the crenellations or the domes or whatever Mordecai, whatever your aesthetic is, it's it is that. I maybe it's like an old Tudor style, like what we know with kind of the, the beige plaster and the dark wood beams or something. Um But uh there is a place that is just begging for you to explore it or to, to you know go in there because a lot of this architecture has been all vaguely familiar to you all well, remember we are in hell so even the nice place is still right next to the noisy ice machine hmm. <clears throat> what do you think of that one he says to the rest yeah, it, it looks, it looks, it looks really expensive. What? <laughs> hey, what? I'll, I'll, I'll make a minor image and, and I'll, or a minor illusion and I'll say, Mordecai wants to stay there and I'll put the arrow to it. It's part of the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. Professor? Then I'll, then I'll say out loud, you don't have to shout, you might be deaf, but we're not. And of course I know he can't hear me, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, professor, I mean, considering you're a history teacher, this place does look historical. I mean, uh, you're approaching, you're, to you, it, it's more like a study in architecture to where it's an appreciation of Mordecai's aesthetic tastes. But, you know, it does look kind of old, kind of kind of Mesomaskin, which is, you know, early Mesomaskin is kind of late Shadahar kind of a thing. So. Yeah. I mean, if we want to stay here, I don't mind that at all. Okay. It's a little surprise. Well, I'm sorry, what about the price? Oh, Mordecai says we'll at least ask the price. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And he goes towards the front door. Okay. And uh, the the dark uh, actually the uh, the doors are a very dark, almost a naturally uh, a naturally black wood, and they open very easily. And the inside is uh, predominantly black and red that you're seeing. Uh, the stonework or the other... Um, uh, the things you appreciate uh, seem to be there uh, for the most part. Uh, there is... Uh, there are a, f a few uh, mixed, mixed bag citizens... Uh, that would fit in that you've seen on the streets because everyone here has something like uh, some people have feathers or wings or they're really big or really small or they'll have like chains just kind of growing out of them or they'll be goat people etc etc the person uh, th there is one person behind the desk uh, this isn't as big as a castle but uh, it's, it's a little smaller but it would look like a, a nice manor uh, person behind the counter uh, has uh, lizard-like features, though with um, similarly purple-colored feathers kind of coming down the back. And you see two hooks just sort of resting on the counter. Um, and... How much would it be to rent a room for a while? This is a special place, and special services will depend on what you seek. Would you just like a room? Would you like some special attention? Wink? Would you like some special diet? We can cater to what it is you seek. 
I doubt you have anyone who suits my needs. Just a room for rest. I see this place is copulent too. Uh, <laughs> Mordecai, it's, it's, it's too bad you changed back. I'm sure they have the very best blood here. If you seek blood, yes, it can be provided. Hmm. That's not a necessity for me right now. Such is as it is for you. Your service will be customized to what it is you desire. Simply rest. If rest is all you need, I could put you in our finest coffin. Or did you need you something? Beds. Ah, a little bit more. You deserve it, after all. Yes, we have beds stuffed with feathers, with Man, dried God. beans, with hay. You can sleep on corpses if you wish. Kind of looking to get the best for my money. Money? Are we coin. talking? Ah, coin. I see. Yes, coin can be accepted. This is your first time here, isn't it? <laughs> yes. What a sweetling you are. We will take your coin this time. Place one on the counter so that I can see. And I put a gold on the counter. It takes its hook and, and scoots it over. Kind of takes the hooks. It doesn't. It really doesn't have fingers. It just has hooks. Uh, leans down. <laughs> what was the source of this gold? I can almost taste it, but it's indistinct. It's not from here, if that's what you mean. No, it's not from here. It never would be. No, how did you get this currency? It's from my hometown. Hmm. Perhaps... Nowhere near here. A little bit of sentiment is what I flavor, is what I taste. Enough as a spice. I could take more from you. I will accept your gold, so long as it pleases me. How many would please you? <laughs> oh, it takes the hook, kind of taps its... Not necessarily a... like. It's kind of shaped like a beak, but it, it's more like the snoot of a snake. Hmm. I should say... Seventy-six of these would please me. Perfect. Then I shall give you seventy-six. Your custom is appreciated. And I'm sure you will find your room accommodating. <laughs> Please follow my assistant. And from a, a hallway off to the side of where the, the counter is, uh, there is a little flying creature, uh, similar to the one that got bagged before, like a little flying cat scorpion. Uh, but it's wearing a little, like, red bell hop hat. I don't trust it. <laughs> and, oh, I'm sorry, and a vest. Thank you. Right this way. 
I'll take you to your room. And Mordecai leads the others and towards the room. Oh, you're bargaining for a room for everyone? Oh, yes. Oh. All right, it's going to cost more than 76. You were just talking about everyone. yourself. No, I wasn't just talking about myself. Oh. I wanted a single room. We all could fit in a single room. Uh. Then, uh. Okay, sure. Well, we can we can uh, have we can blend this into the transaction. Uh, you're like, okay, well, come on, everyone. And the uh, the person behind the counter says, "Hold a second. That is only a single. If it is all of you, well, we only need one room. Well, if that is what you desire, I don't ask questions. What takes place? But seventy six is not enough for one." No, if there's going to be four, there's going to be more. Especially if they have their own needs. <laughs> Do any of you wish to sleep on a pile of flesh? No. Feathers? Gold? I mean, Would you like to sleep on a pile of gold or jewels? You know, gold's not as comfortable to sleep on as they say it is. It's really not. Uh, your losses, I suppose. But the price will match what it is you wish to have. Unless oh, you are sleeping all room. upon this one, one here. Time. Point uh, Hooks uh, over to Mordecai. No, no. No, um, actually, the the pile of corpses, I, I don't I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet, but maybe 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 tomorrow maybe tomorrow that'll be okay. Then what is in your heart? What is your luxury? That is to whom and how we cater. So, we talked about this last week, right? The the wish right now, she wants to be a lich. So, <laughs> what she's going to cater for is just that experience, the undead experience. I can dig it. All right. Um, your request can be met, though it will take an extra minute or two to prepare your part of the suite. That's fair. You there, man, scabrous man with the book. How do you wish to rest? What is your desire? Something standard. Something soft. A bed of spikes? I believe I said soft. Yes. They could be, they could be like nerf spikes. <laughs> Perhaps... Perhaps you would like to sleep on a bed of books, pages of information. If you can make the information actually interesting, that doesn't sound so bad. Of course. As interesting as you please. What information would you like to rest upon? Lewd etchings are extra. <laughs> no, no. Information on... Inf information on things of the other world. Which other world? Ever the academic. There's something that I've been curious about ever since I joined this little group. Of things beyond the stars. Stars. 
Ah, yes, those. I'm sure something can be arranged then for you. Why, thank you. And this one, uh, Casimir, you see that this thing's beak turns to you and it motions a, a hook in your direction. He can't hear, sadly. Just give him something feathery. Hmm. Something feathery can be arranged. Very good. So, it will be more than 76. From your desires, from the things that it is that you wish to rest upon, to assert yourself over to command, as that is what this place is. It is what it fosters. I will now ask for 79 gold. <laughs> Deal. Exact change only, please. And I give him the other, the rest of that gold, the other three. Okay. Flip, flip, flip. The little imp in a vest and a boop, little concierge hat, uh, little at bellhop hat. This way. I'll take you to your room and show you your alcoves. And Thank you. Uh, it goes flapping through, and you follow behind. Uh, the hallway is rather dark, uh, a little foreboding, but not uncomfortable. It's just, it's that feeling of everything is at your peripheral vision. Yeah, there's a hallway. You're going down it, but it's it's almost just like all you can do is see forward. Everything in your periphery is just kind of muffled or darkened. It's not clear. Uh, and then this little uh, bellhop imp uh, takes you to your room and opens it. And inside is uh, Mordecai, uh, very luxurious. Uh, this is a royal suite to you. Um, and in fact, you can see just poop right past it. There is a, uh, there is a bed chamber that is uh, your... I mean, this is absolutely... Your, your your heart is do, 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 like you can feel it racing because this is yes this is what it's like to be a king to be the ruler you know maybe this is what it would be like you know you keep kicking butt you're becoming influential rich maybe this is what you deserve when you get out of here this probably might, might be how you should be treated for everything you've done no one's ever come up to you Mordecai and said oh geez hey thanks for thanks for clearing the harbor of the Shadowheart Mordecai thanks for dying Mordecai you know, thanks for saving the day, Mordecai. No, when was the last time, including your party members, any that you've ever, uh, you've ever had that? Huh. Anyway, for tonight, you get what you deserve. Bright. You have a room off of the main run. And as you open it, it looks like an ossuary very similar to those that you've been in before. And instead of a bed, there is a small, perhaps an altar, um, not necessarily a sarcophagus, although maybe it's more of a, a stepping stone for you. Because there is, in the wall, an alcove that is remarkably your height, your width. And you can ensconce yourself inside this alcove in an ossuary. Well, uh, I don't want to get to the main event too fast. I want to look around a little first. Oh, sure. Um, there's, uh, uh, there are, are bones of all shapes and sizes and even bright um, whether creepy or cool, uh, it even seems like that there's a, a little bit of a natural bend here for those who are uh, more of the vegetarian undead. As you see uh, leaves that have had their green parts removed and you just get the almost like skeleton capillary system of leaves that have been arranged in different patterns and also are 
are uh, strewn uh, over the wall. Huh. That's kind of interesting. Well, I'll uh, I'll try a sample. <laughs> uh, sure. It. Uh, <laughs> you lick the wall. The snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> 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 um it it it's kind of crunchy uh pe like a petrified leaf skeleton is a little crunchy for you okay <laughs> uh professor you open up what looks like an old library room and there there's just a pile of papers and books and uh and there's even a nice ladder which in the back of your mind, you're, maybe this is something you've always wanted to do, Professor. Now, if, if I'm wrong, I'm simply prompting you, because I do want you to speak through your character's uh, recently adjusted mindset. But, oh, have you ever just wanted to take one of those rolling ladders along a library wall and just kind of ride it and then jump off into a pile of books and scatter them everywhere and make a bunch of noise and scream or scribble notes or open up the book that one of your competitors wrote and just go wrong no garbage and fling it to the air no one's watching in here professor this is your room for the night jumping off the rolling ladder into a pile of books no rolling upon the ladder in the first place <laughs> oh you assume that I haven't done that already as for everything else, well, well, none of us ever you caught you that, then. You assume that I, you assume that I haven't already done these things in a matter that befits the mutual benefit of academia and knowledge as a whole. No, I think I might take this time to ruminate a little bit. Ruminate on Mordecai, in particular. All right. Uh, you can ruminate in your room. Uh, Casimir, uh, <laughs> you walk into a very plain room and there's just a feather stuffed mattress there for you. <laughs> he lays down on it. He doesn't care. <laughs> it's soft. Some of the some of the ends of the feathers are a little prickly and will actually poke you through the mattress. I've had doors. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, you have uh, you have this main central suite, and each of you have your own separate uh, bed chamber off of it that is styled in a way that. Uh, well, Casimir, you didn't really get a voice for yourself because you couldn't hear the question, but uh, a, a prickly feather bed was uh, chosen for you. Uh, I guess we can't have you be too comfortable. Um, but for the three others, I mean, Bright, you have your little necromantic Borg alcove. Uh, Professor, you have a library. You can just Scrooge McDuck down into a bunch of books like he's in his vault. And Mordecai, you have plush... Uh, uh, you have whatever. It, it's all soft. It's the finest quality. It's silk. It's uh, silk and satin, uh, polished wood, banisters. Um, I mean, it's it's there for you. He loves it. <laughs> he flops under the bed to test how soft it is. And if there's nothing else to do tonight, he's going to get ready for bed. Okay. Uh, Casimir, Bright, and Professor, are you, are you retiring to your own chambers? Well, it doesn't seem like there's any reason to be anywhere other than our own chambers. Yeah. Sure. But, uh, so, uh, I'm going to take time to adjust my armor to fit my new wings. Okay. Uh, it... I need to... Scale is medium. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not broken. I just need to adjust it. No, I. The mutation itself doesn't necessarily indicate 
But for getting wings as the sorcerer or for winged races like ASMR or uh, not, not well, I don't know. It might say for ASMR too. Uh, there might be an armor restriction besides just needing the slots, but it's not heavy. Uh, it might allow for medium. I'll have to look into it. It but does. Yeah. The, the... It, it does. Uh, it's just non-heavy armor. Um, it... Heavy is the only restriction. Otherwise. And Asimar normally also do not require it as their wings are not physical. They're oh, a, that's they're right. They're, 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 yeah, they, they don't actually have angel wings. It's uh, kind of like it's Diablo different. style. Yeah, they're just little wiggly yeah. special effects. Uh, Aarakocra, though. Is is Aarakocra allowed medium? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Uh, but still, uh, Casimir, one way or the other, you are going to begin you know tap 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 and working on your armor we'll we'll get to the details uh here in a little bit because we're we're coming up to a break point uh and where we actually will break mordecai you are in your room you flop on the bed i don't know you roll around um you there's actually each of you uh has whatever you would consider to be uh i don't know like a bathroom or something so mordecai if you wanted to take you know you want to like dip in a uh a uh whatever a big copper tub filled with like hot steaming water or whatever uh you can do this oh he would absolutely take advantage of that um but uh where we will leave off is as you are you know you've take never your... seen a lich in a tub <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> well, but well... maybe maybe it could happen <laughs> well well i i guess that would be more like uh stocking up uh it's soup stock bones and uh, anyway um uh, yeah. <laughs> uh where we will leave on a uh um a mid-game cliffhanger before we get up and take our break uh mordecai you whatever you take your bath you flop down on the bed uh and you are i mean whatever pajamas or boxers or you just you're like whatever i'm alive again i'm naked and free no one's here to to watch or judge or whatever and uh, you know, you, you're like, yeah, or you're celebrating, something happens, and, um, as you do, you bite your tongue, and there's a little bit of, you feel like a little trickle, and then you go, huh? And your tongue runs over the fact, or a tooth, and the fact that your teeth are starting to elongate and turn into points, and then it strikes you you stop breathing for a moment and you just get this uh -oh. cold rush and your heart flutters rapidly and then stops and well. you pass out for how long we'll find out but that's the cliffhanger until we get back from our break um, so, all right, everyone out there in audience, hey, thank you for being here. Thank you for the raid. I'm sorry that I didn't get the alert. I need to get up and uh, uh, use my own uh, my own uh, chambers. Uh, so we'll be back in about ten minutes, everyone. Uh, go ahead and uh, and just jam out, get a snack or drink yourself, and we'll come back after a little while, and we'll see what ends up happening after this. <laughs> 